Any question about my personal life, ban them. No, I don't got any friends, dude. No person deserves this kind of ridicule. Like, I hate my f***ing life at this point. My grandma's dying. I spend my entire life sitting in this f***ing room. I had $1,400 worth of chargebacks come out. And all you do is get picked on and criticized. That's my life. Most of you guys would crack under the stress that these people put me through. I just want to escape the bullying. I do. People make, make fun of me and pick at me. I, I'm pretty much defeated in every aspect of my life. You know, I have no self-esteem to begin with, and I feel like nobody loves me, but guess what? It's okay. He's an easy f***ing target. If you haven't heard of his name before, I guarantee you, you're definitely not going to forget it from this point onwards. I detest this game. I hate you too. Come on! Honestly, can you stop, Kudzo? Ban everybody that says I got on. I'm done. I'm sorry, I'm done with the stream. Geordie Jordan aka Wings of Redemption was born on the 21st of April 1986 into what you might call unfortunate circumstances. His birth had been the result of a teenage pregnancy and due to the young age of his parents, Geordie would be raised with the help of his grandparents in their trailer park home. At the age of two, his father, an alcoholic, would abandon the family entirely, giving us a pretty clear idea of the unfortunate means by which Wings of Redemption had been brought into the world. However, while the circumstances were far from desirable, as Geordie Jordan entered school, he would would begin to excel in sports, claiming to be one of the most athletic people in his class. That would be until a physically gifted foreign exchange student joined his year, placing Geordie in second place for most school sporting events. In order to counteract this, Geordie explained that he began to eat more during dinner time under the assumption that it would help him grow faster, hopefully giving him a physical advantage over his opponents. However, this would cause Geordie to begin gaining excessive weight, ultimately leading to a sporting underperformance and isolation into the fantasy world of video games. In the process of this, his family, including his brother and single mum, would move from his grandparents' trailer park home into low-income government housing, where Geordie Jordan would continue to gain weight while further isolating himself from society. By the age of 14, he had reached approximately 240 pounds or 110 kilograms, also being diagnosed with bipolar and social anxiety disorder, adding to the isolation even further. To counteract this, Geordie Jordan would begin to take on various low-skilled jobs in order to get out of the house more often, as well as earn himself a little bit of income. In his in his late teens, he would take on various positions such as working at a video rental store, a supermarket as a 911 operator, and even as a Domino's pizza delivery driver. However, he found many of these to be boring and unstimulating, often leading him to quit within only two weeks of starting. However, at the age of 18, Geordie Jordan would finally get into a position which he was able to hold for some period of time, specifically a job working for a company by the name of Metglass. What I did at Metglass is I was an overhead crane operator for blast furnaces that basically poured liquid metal and things out, kind of like Terminator 2. While working at Met Class in 2007, Geordie and another friend by the name of Z7 Taylor would play Call of Duty in the evenings, also starting to regularly watch sniper montages over on YouTube. In the process, Geordie thought about making his own videos, however, given his busy work schedule, would dismiss the idea as he had minimal time for doing so. However, in 2008, an event would occur that presented itself as a negative in the beginning, however, would turn out to be a huge turning point in his life, the global financial crisis. Geordie explained that since he was one of the more expensive employees at Metglass, who was one of the first to lose their job as business profits began to tumble. They started laying people off, and one of the people that got laid off was me because I was one of the newer employees, and I was also getting paid more than most of the employees on the flag factory floor. He would then be put on government unemployment payments, which in combination with his previous employment history seemed to dampen Geordie Jordan's confidence in relation to his ability to hold down a job working for someone else. If you think I could hold a job down, you're kidding yourself. The reason I don't get a job is I can't hold one down. However, there was one one advantage to come out of this whole situation. Suddenly, Geordie Jordan had all the time in the world. His friend Z7 Taylor had started making his own Call of Duty videos and noticing the success of them because I seen Taylor in his channel and I love reading the comments, so I'm like, Damn. He would order a HD PVR capture card and begin to record his own high definition Call of Duty videos in his newly found free time. Geordie Jordan would then register a YouTube channel under the name Wings of Redemption, taking the name from an inscription on King Tut's tomb which stated, Death shall come quick on swift wings to him who disturbs the peace of the king. But while making a brand new channel was extremely exciting for Wings of Redemption, he wouldn't even make it past his first video before embroiling himself in some level of controversy. In his very first video, Wings felt the need to stick up for a Call of Duty strategy known as camping, where the player would stay in one location for a prolonged period of time and wait for players to come to him instead of the other way around. Some people think I'm a camper, which 
I am a gambler. The strategy was common but often frowned upon by players who were more aggressive, and as a result, his comment section would fill up by many who opposed his playstyle. However, on the opposite end of the spectrum, people also respected Wings for his honesty and his unapologetic nature towards the strategies that he preferred, and as a result, he began to build an audience. Given the almost non-existent competition on YouTube at the time, Wings would quickly become one of the fastest growing creators on the platform. And with such, he began to gain the attention of other large Call of Duty YouTubers, specifically one by the name of Woody's Game Attack. Hi, this is Woody, the unexceptional gamer, and I make Call of Duty videos designed to help my unexceptional Capture brethren the do better in the game. Woody's Game Tag had begun YouTube at around the same time as Wings, and in order for them to share their audience with one another, they would begin to post dual commentary videos. Hey guys, it's Woody the Unexceptional Gamer and I'm doing a dual con with Wings of Redemption today. Also starting a podcast together by the name of Painkiller Already, or PKA for short. Hello guys, this is Painkiller Already, and I'm your host, Jordy Jordan aka known as Wings of Redemption, for anybody else who can't put two and two together. In this podcast, Wings would continue with his strong opinions and unapologetic attitude on topics relating to Call of Duty. However, with such, would also begin to gain a reputation as a guy who would constantly respond to those who shared differing opinions. While Wings' goal was to subdue the negative feedback by responding to it, it instead seemed to amplify it, as his audience noticed that the best way to get attention from Wings was to simply leave a negative comment, which Wings often struggled to ignore. In addition to this, Wings would begin to show his face more regularly in his videos, prompting negative comments in relation to his weight. However, despite clearly being on the heavier side, his subscriber count was mediated by his gameplay rather than his physical appearance, and by August 2011, Wings of Redemption had peaked as the 281st most subscribed channel on all of YouTube, with a little over 300,000 subscribers, and for all intents and purposes, Wings of Redemption's YouTube channel seemed to be chugging along just fine. That would be until the 67th episode of the Painkiller Already podcast, where the tragedy of Wings of Redemption would really set into motion after one of, if not the most notorious Call of Duty events in YouTube history. To spice things up on this episode of the podcast, Woody and Wings would invite another streamer and YouTuber on by the name of Syndicate, who Woody described to be the best Call of Duty zombies player on the planet. Possibly feeling subconsciously threatened by Syndicate's channel and Call of Duty skill, Wings was quote, wildly disrespectful to Syndicate throughout the stream. Yeah, I could put up a fight again, you know, in like Cod 4, Man of 2, World of War, but then throw me in the game's black ops. Would get destroyed get in World of War. I have never lost. That's in addition to this, Wings would go ahead and state that he says that he'd be much better at zombies on his first game. He doesn't even play zombies, but if he were to, he'd be much better than the, the best player on the planet. In order to settle the dispute, Wings and Syndicate would agree to one v one each other in multiplayer. What you wanna go M16s on Bog right now? That that could go. I'd do it for the fun of it. I'd go for it. Let's do it. So what map are we playing? With game rules that favored Wings as opposed to Syndicate. He lays it all out there, so it's to his advantage. Just to top it all off, the match was hosted on USA servers, favoring Wings and giving Syndicate a massive disadvantage due to lag as he was located in the UK. There was no way that Wings could possibly lose this match, as the odds were completely stacked in his favour, or so he thought. The winner would be the first player to reach 30 kills, or whoever had the most kills at the 10 minute mark. After 9 minutes of intense back and forth, Syndicate had 13 kills, while Wings only had 9 with less than a minute remaining. Realising that there was no way he could catch up, Wings would announce that, Yeah, I probably won't be on Pankill already again. Which was followed by a events that I think are best experienced by simply watching the real footage. Wings, did you spawn in? I'm, I broke my controller. You broke your controller? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, keep laughing, you <laughs> Why the f*** you stream that sh It was your idea. No, I didn't say stream it. In front of 7,000 live viewers, after hours of trash talk, Wings was humiliated with 9 kills as opposed to Syndicate's 14. Geordie's reaction led his audience to realise one simple thing. Wings of Redemption was not this famous Call of Duty hero who took a romantic risk by starting YouTube. No, he was an immature man-child who happened to catch the Call of Duty YouTube wave while living on unemployment. The difference between his online persona and true personality had finally shone through, and in case Wings' reputation hadn't deteriorated enough already, this was really only the beginning. Syndicate would post a screenshot to his Twitter the following day, displaying a conversation in which Wings had requested that they play again in a fixed match, where Syndicate would let Wings win with the goal of restoring Geordie's reputation. The screenshot would end with Syndicate stating, you want to come out on top of this situation, you just made it 10 times worse, as well as, no way Wings, you just blew it big time. Wings's videos would then begin to fill with comments regarding his childish reaction to the loss. However, rather than rectifying it by stating that Syndicate won fair and square, Wings would paint himself as the victim of the situation 
position, stating that the reason he didn't win the match was because Woody hadn't set the rules correctly. In addition to this, he would upload videos talking about the many problems that he'd been dealing with, uploaded with the assumed goal of garnering sympathy from his viewer base. There had been so much stress with sub box breaking, the uh, the view count thing, the losing the 1v1, all the haters, all the loss of subs. I've actually gained 20 pounds because all I've been doing is worrying and eating, worrying and eating. The problem was that attempting to garner sympathy ended up having the opposite effect on his reputation as the approval seeking did nothing but display his overwhelming lack of confidence. This lack of personal confidence also began to manifest itself in videos where Wings would talk about his weight, stating that he had gained approximately 100 pounds from comfort eating since his reputation began to decline. In order to combat this, Wings would move in with a newer member of the PKA podcast, Kyle, where Kyle would act as his personal trainer, giving him an exercise routine and cooking him healthy food for every single meal. Kyle had even spent $5,000 to rebuild his shower. And if he was going to live with me, we would have to put in a new shower. So construction began the next day on a $5,000 shower. Stating that it would have been too small for Wings to fit in. However, despite Kyle putting in an incredible effort to help Wings, after only a week, Wings had requested to leave. Kyle convinced him to stay for another three weeks, leaving after having lost an impressive 40 pounds. Upon returning home, Geordie would hire a personal trainer. However, problematically, given his lack of discipline and the return to his old environment, Wings would gain the weight back in the few weeks following his return home. Despite having left Kyle's house, this wouldn't be the last time that they hung out. Approximately five months Months later, the three main members of the PKA podcast being Woody, Kyle, and Wings agreed to go on a survival-style camping trip in the woods together. Kyle traveled three hours from his house to the location at which they agreed to meet, which was followed by a call to Wings checking to see how far away he was. This would be the point at which Woody and Kyle's continually compassionate attitude towards Wings would finally dissipate. I'm driving in the night before. Let me give old Wings a call, make sure we're all good to go here, you know? Call him up, say, hey man, you're ready to do this thing. I'm, I'm driving in now about three hours from the place. What, what are you up to? He's like, I'm not going. What? What, what, what do you mean? I, I'm not coming. When were you going to tell me? I'm telling you right now. Wings had left Kyle and Woody to camp by themselves, resulting in Wings alienating his final two YouTube friends and ultimately being kicked off the PKA podcast. Yeah, so we've decided, uh, it was a group decision, we decided that uh, Wings of Redemption wasn't going to continue with us uh, on the show for at least the, the foreseeable future. Um, he's got a lot of stuff that he needs to work out before he's, you know, up to par with, with, with what we need from him. You know, he, he's, he's having a hard time and uh, he's, he's made some decisions that we didn't feel were, were so friendly. So for the time being, uh, we're gonna we're gonna continue without him. It would then become apparent that Wings was questioning whether or not he wanted to continue as a YouTuber, stating that he would like to quit YouTube. However, the status it provided made such a decision extremely difficult. I know what I need to do. What I need to do is quit YouTube and move on with my life. But at the same time, this is the high point so far in my life. It's hard to walk away from having access to 50,000 people. Basically being able to get advice at any time of the day, any day of the week. Hard to walk away from, you know, being somebody of importance to going back into a world where you're nobody. However, perhaps the end of Geordie's YouTube channel was out of his control because by this point, his subscriber count had already begun to decline. The release of Black Ops, Modern Warfare 3, Black Ops 2, as well as the increasing simplicity of creating video content meant that Wings had substantially more competition for the videos that he was creating. With a dying channel and absolutely no one else to turn to, to, Wings would begin to upload variety videos on games such as Fallout and Final Fantasy in a desperate attempt to slow the death of his channel. Welcome everybody. Welcome to my Fallout 4 playthrough. He would also attempt to recapture his old fame by covering Call of Duty drama and starting a new podcast called The Podcast Show with other washed up Call of Duty streamers like Whiteboy 7 Street. However, these would also fail to slow the death of his channel. In addition to all of this, Wings would break up with a girl he had been dating at the time by the name of Brandy, which depressed him even further, dropping his motivation to lower and lower levels. From this, Wings of Redemption would move over to Twitch, stating that it required less editing, and through donations and subscriptions, he was able to make more money than he ever could while on YouTube. And while this was a positive, in a strange backwards kind of way, this extra income would come to him alongside an equivalent amount of emotional stress and further unexpected problems. The lack of editing and live nature of the streams meant that Wing's personality was on full display, warts and all. This meant that if something annoyed him within the game, there was no way to simply cut it out as he had on YouTube, and anyone watching was able to record whatever reaction Wings happened to have. Wings would break controllers, complain extensively, headache, I'm hot, 
my sugar's low, I, somebody drank all my Pepsis. As well as constantly rage. As a result, channels began to pop up such as Sean Ranklin, X-Bottle and Gulag Kingpin, all of which devoted to uploading Wings of Redemption's worst moments. This created a meme community around trolling Wings, where viewers would often recreate his most common actions, such as banning subscribers from the chat, drinking Pepsi and eating Wendy's chili, done for the sole purpose of getting videos for these specific troll channels. Because if I talk about anything, on everything, there's a video made about it and there's 20,000 people laughing at me or there's a podcast with 100,000 viewers. All of this would lead up to an apex in a stream on one unassuming night in late 2017, at which point Wings would do something which many consider to be the most iconic moment in the history of Wings of Redemption. The live stream started like any other. However, as with many of his streams, it wouldn't be long before half the lobby was there purely to stream snipe and annoy Geordie Jordan. Oh, damn it, dude. As the night progressed, the stream sniping only got worse. Then, in order to combat the stream snipers, his viewers suggested that he appear offline, to which Geordie responded with... Look here! Look here! Look! Listen! Appearing offline does not stop it. So stop giving advice you know nothing about. Possibly paving the way for the breakdown which he was about to have. The stream sniping continued and feeling helpless to the circumstances he had found himself in, Wings of Redemption would respond with the following. I don't know when I'll stream again. I really need to make this money. I really wanted to get this surgery, man. I wanted it so bad. <laughs> I just can't do it. I can't take this sh no more, man. I want, all I wanted to do was, like, I was lonely. I wanted to stream and, and, and have a good time. Have, have a good game. <laughs> The clip has gained 2.6 million views to this day, and just like his last rage, the clip would go on to continually haunt him. However, unlike his last rage, where he would have to simply deal with comments, this time around, his trolls would go to much more effort, joining his games in order to play the content through the speaker. Look here! Look here! Look! Listen! <laughs> Appearing offline does not stop it, so stop giving- all right, your boy, did you invite him? While giving more fuel to the growing number of troll channels. One of these channels goes by the name of Liquid Richard, who has today uploaded four full length professionally produced albums, all of which being made from the stupid things that Wings has said over the years, which is especially hilarious as the music is unironically extremely well made and entertaining. From the point of his notorious COD World War II rage, the Wings of Redemption cycle continued over and over again. He would do something stupid, attempt to prove that he was in the right, resulting in even more trolls, or he would attempt to improve his life in some way or another, fail miserably, and be publicly ridiculed by his detractors. He would get weight loss surgery in Mexico, apparently lose 100 pounds, never prove it, and still look the exact same two years later. He would continue to ban trolls from the chat, giving them the exact attention they desired, ensuring that they rejoin at a later date on a second account. Exotic's been banned nine times. Him, him giving his free Twitch Prime to me does not going to stop him from being banned at this point. It was as if, in every situation, it was impossible for Wings of Redemption to choose a response that wouldn't end in complete and utter catastrophe. Seemingly consistent with the overwhelming misfortune in Geordie Jordan's life, only two months ago on the 26th of July 2021, his Twitch partnership would be revoked for breaking Exhibit D of the content guidelines, as explained on a Wings of Redemption YouTube livestream titled Twitch Fallout. Twitch took my partnership away today for Exhibit D. Geordie then stated that he may leave the internet and get a real job. Everybody in the chat is telling me to get a job. And, you know, that's a possibility. However, if his past has taught us anything, the chance of that actually happening is unbelievably low. Wings continues to stream on YouTube. However, the dislike ratio and a short look at the chat gives us a pretty good idea of how many people are there for no other reason but to continue to troll him. I was watching a video created by one of my favorite YouTubers the other day, Exerbia, who included a line in his video, Thoughts from Your Deathbed, which I think runs incredibly true to the tragic tale of Wings of Redemption. The hard road was easy, while the easy road was hard. Wings of Redemption has spent his 
his entire life attempting to walk the easy road, avoiding anything that would result in short-term adversity. However, through seeking comfort, he's ironically transformed his life into a complete and utter tragedy. It's as if you can't really avoid the tragedy of life, but the choice we get is whether or not we want to experience the tragedy now by our own voluntary admission, or whether we ignore what we need to do and have the tragedy happen to us later down the road, as is what happened in the case of Wings of Redemption. 